Hey folks, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone who's watching here. Uh, here, Alvin Payman and I are going to talk about GPUs for highly available virtual machines in Azure Stack ATI. Uh, here, you can move on, Payman. Uh, we have, I guess, four overarching topics. Uh, of course, I'll give a quick introduction of why people use GPUs when it comes to clustering in Azure Stack ATI. Um, our GPU virtualization technologies. Um, the most exciting bit, of course, which is the GPU support that's coming into Azure Stack ATI 21 H2. Uh, some nice fun uh, Windows Admin Center UI that's coming in to actually manage your GPUs and assign them to virtual machines. And then, of course, a little bit of talk about our future for GPU partitioning. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll pass it over to Payment to talk about why GPUs. Yeah, so before we actually get into uh, the actual tool and how um, GPUs are going to be available uh, as part of the highly available VMs. I think it's important to understand why GPUs are important and what type of processes can benefit from GPUs uh, when it comes to you know, modern applications that, uh, that we talk about. Uh, in many cases, GPUs are faster when we talk about operations that can be divided into smaller, isolated sub-processes. Uh, and these processes then uh, be, can then be uh, uh, given it pretty much into smaller process uh, uh, process controls that GPUs can handle. And uh, after uh, doing this, uh, what happens is you can have higher throughput for your application instead of lower latency. And this is most prevalent in operations that relate to linear algebra. A lot of the modern applications that are being developed for many different use cases take advantage of linear algebra. And one of the benefits of linear algebra is that operations that uh, happen, in this case, I, I'm showing an example of a multiplication of two matrices together, uh, can be performed independent of uh, other rows. So in this case, I'm showing uh, multiplication. I'm multiplying uh, this first matrix by the second matrix. And as you can see, uh, the operation of row multiplied by the column to produce ij in the final matrix can be done independent of other rows and columns in the two matrices that i'm showing and this is why in most cases gpus can can perform much better uh, than cpus uh, when it comes to you know actually doing the multiplication and do linear algebra operations now if we look at uh, the performance difference between cpus and gpus for such an operation, you know, matrix multiplication is one of the most used uh, operations in many use cases. Um, you could see that as the dimension of the matrix increases in size, the performance difference between CPUs and GPUs, uh, you know, drastically change. It's kind of exponential in terms of how much performance you could get. One of the reasons that in lower dimension matrices, you don't have much of a difference in terms of performance is because of the way current uh, architecture of CPUs, memory, and GPU is architected. Uh, and the reason is uh, for your GPU to be able to actually do the operation, the matrices need to be copied from your RAM, your memory, to your GPU memory. And that operation is quite extensive and actually takes it quite, quite a bit of a time. Um, so for smaller matrices, if, if your operation is pretty small, the actual operation of moving your matrices and your operations to GPU could take a decent amount of time. Thus, you're not going to get much of an improvement in, 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 in performance. But then as your matrix uh, dimension increases, uh, the initial moving of uh, your matrices and your operations to GPU from your memory to your GPU memory uh, is just a fraction of your actual operation. So then you could get quite a bit of improvement in performance uh, when you do that operation on the GPU. Now, I give you an example of a matrix multiplication. Uh, there are many type of workloads that actually use in the algebra uh, in the, uh, as part of foundation of what you do uh, as part of the workloads. I have three examples here. Uh, one of the ones that most people are familiar with is you know, AI and machine learning. Uh, in this case, you have training and inferencing uh, in many different use cases, computer vision, natural language processing, and uh, GPU acceleration can vastly reduce both training and inference time. And again, the reason for this is most of the operations that are happening for these workloads, uh, at the end of the day, gets back to uh, linear algebra operations. Uh, you know, one example is multiplication, but many other operations that I didn't really go into. Same, same uh, goes with the high performance compute uh, and media processing. 
uh, you'll be able to parallelly operate over many data points uh, that are independent. In this case, you know, for example, you could have oil and gas simulations uh, or video transcode, which can then again be translated into linear algebra operations and be performed much faster on a GPU than a CPU. And again, increased throughput. Uh, similar goes with 3D apps and desktop remoting. Uh, uh, the GPU intensive uh, applications here, uh, in, in this case, we have simulation, design, CAD, uh, all these operations uh, kind of require high throughput, be able to parallelly operate on many different uh, uh, amount of data at parallel with, without uh, kind of relation between data points when it's going through operations, thus GPUs can have uh, immense number of performance increase in this case as well. Uh, so since this is quite important for us, uh, as you could, you could see, many of the modern applications that uh, I actually went through um, uh, are getting a quite of a performance boost when they come to GPU. Uh, we have GPU uh, as one of the in important pillars uh, when we think about uh, applications and, and workloads that customers are going to bring to our services. So it's it's one of the core uh, it's one of the core pieces when we think about customer workloads and how we can enable these type of workloads uh, everywhere in Azure, right? In Azure Cloud, Azure Stack Hub, HCI, uh, and be able to manage all of those in a layer, you know, that we have in here, Hyper V and, and and Windows, to be able to use different vendors as well. In this case, in most cases, uh, people think of Nvidia as one of the vendors that uh, that offers GPUs, but many different vendors have. Uh, GPUs that can also um, uh, do the same operations in, in a faster manner. Now, um, I think I talked a lot about how GPU and CPU performance could, you know, uh, affect your application. I think I'm going to go over a demo and how that uh, that this demo kind of showcases um, why it's important to, you know, use GPUs for certain use cases. So let me actually play this demo. I'm gonna over it. So um, there's a solution called Vision on Edge that uh, our team at Microsoft has developed. It's an open source uh, solution that kind of simplifies the process of uh, customers creating uh, computer vision based solutions for the edge. Um, it takes care of acceleration, optimization, and all the pieces that are quite difficult when customers come into actually creating um, solutions for the edge. So I've developed, um, I have two different VMs here. Uh, one VM is with a CPU uh, for uh, V cores. Um, I've developed the actual application. I've, I've deployed it into this VM. I, I'm showing you here that I've deployed all the modules here using IoT Edge. Uh, in this case, I've deployed the solution, uh, the CPU version of the solution. Um, and I'm going to actually show you the solution itself. We have a UI for it. So let me actually find the IP address of uh, my public IP address of my VM. Uh, I'm going to take this and go to port 8181, which we are using here to show this solution. I'm not going to go into details of what this solution entails. I can share resources on how this works, but the key important part of this is we have a part here that's, you know, it's a scenario of libraries that we've found important for customers. In many use cases, in this case, uh, for manufacturing, it's quite important to be able to count specific objects when it goes to a production line. I'm going to deploy this uh, scenario on, on a camera that um, I have in, let's say, a manufacturing plant. And this is run, running on a CPU right now. It's an AMD 64. Um, and you could see, uh, if, if I show in the top above, you would see the um, 100 millisecond, which is the time it takes to do inference on one frame uh, on the CPU, and thus that 100 millisecond is giving us around nine, nine and a half frames per second per camera to be able to do detection. And in this case, I'm detecting boxes going through a production line. Now, the same exact solution, I can actually deploy on a GPU. So right now, this was on a CPU. I have the same exact machine. Uh, but one additional step is I have a T4 GPU from NVIDIA uh, attached to this VM, and I will deploy the same solution, but we have a GPU version of the same solution that does inference on a GPU. So let me actually show uh, the same modules here. The only difference is right now, the predict module, I'm using the GPU version, right? So it's going to be able to use the GPU uh, for the actual inference. Um, so if I find the IP address again, if you give me some time, so this is the IP address. I can go again to port 8181.
and I can actually deploy the same solution, um, same scenario that I actually went through um, into to see how my performance is, right? So I'm going to go over the same counting objects. Again, in this case, I'm using GPU for inferencing. And I click deploy. And you could see that I'm actually running this. Um, and the, the amount of time kind of improved drastically, right? By 10, 10 times. It's 9.49, it used to be 100, 110. I can do 90 FPS, 90 frames per camera uh, to be able to do this inference here. And this allows me not to do even one camera, right? I can then go and deploy the same solution over multiple cameras, right? Because I have the performance now to expand this and, and, and perform the same operation that I was doing, not over one, but you know, I'm adding two more cameras here, so three cameras now uh, to this exact uh, machine learning model, and I can deploy this. And each of the cameras can have three, uh, 30 frames per second uh, performance at the same time. So I can parallelly not only run one, uh, but I can run three cameras uh, almost real time, right? It's real time, 30 frames per second. I showed a second camera here that I'm running the same exact model on the second camera. I'm using this you know, third uh, camera here, doing it live. And uh, this kind of shows how much of a performance boost you could get, same exact solution. The only thing that kind of differed was the inference uh, was moved from CPU to GPU, and I could get around 10 times performance, performance boost uh, when it comes to uh, my machine learning operation at the edge. So now with this done, I kind of pass it to Alvin to talk about our virtualization technologies. Alan, I Alan, think you are still, you're muted. still muted. Thank you. Happens a lot. Uh, thank you, Payman. That was a that was a real cool demo. Um, my name is Alvin Morales. I'm a PM on the Hyper-V team. Um, I also look after some virtualization uh, technologies within the HCAI space, um, particularly GPU. And I want to talk a little bit about the virtualization technologies that we're focusing on. Um, for HCI. So th the first one is the discrete device assignment. So what we are trying here uh, with our investments here are around assigning a whole GPU to a VM from a host and uh, be able to dedicate that GPU. There's no sharing involved um, because of the nature of discrete device assignment. Um, this has been in support in single in server 2016, um, but there it was lacking some of the clustering uh, support. Um, you can have you could in, in the past you could have mul multiples and assign into the VM. So that's what the graphic is showing here. Um, if, Payment, if you can advance. So the next type is, that we want to talk about is the GPU partitioning, GPU P. So basically you're you're fractioning your you want to increase your density on on your host. So you basically want to break your GPU into smaller uh, parts and be able to uh, assign it to a VM and using SROV as the isolation mechanism. This is currently available in Azure and Azure Stack uh, Hub, but it wasn't um, it wasn't available um, full into um, other technologies. And as you can see, you can have depending on what you decide to assign to the VM, you, you assign a fraction or uh, more than um, a fraction to a to a VM and multiple users can log in. If you can advance, there we go. So for HCI 21H2, um, so let's talk a little bit of what we had on 20H2, which is not a whole lot. Um, we we didn't have a whole lot of, um, uh, we heard the feedback about GPU. We didn't have anything there. Um, we had very limited target um, for the, the type of usage that we had. The way to do it was really uh, cumbersome, didn't have um, really well uh, integration with WAC. It wasn't really uh, super friendly to configure. So in, on, on 21H2, we, did, we lifted the restrictions for, uh, if you want to go to the next slide, please. 
we lifted the restrictions to do um, clustering. So now we can, the cluster will recognize the GPU as a resource and you can assign a VM, you can assign a, a, a VM to a resource pool which contains a GPU that's that's on the host and then be able to um, um, move the, the VM around. For Azure Stack, for 21H2, we're looking only support DDA at this point. Um, we, we are looking for the VNEX to support GPU-P. Um, we are, we're, we're currently working on that. Um, you can advance to the next slide. So an admin can assign a GPU to, to a VM, and basically what they need to do is, before they, they assign it, they need to really create a pool. Um, they need to change the configuration of the VM to say, hey, you need to you need to report to this pool to be able to get your um, your device, your, your GPU. And um, the cluster manages the placement and the GPU assignment. So the, the if a machine goes down, it will move over the VM and, uh, shut down the VM and try to uh, move it to a, another host that has a, re, a same name resource pool and then be able to assign it and start it over. So that's what we are, we incorporated into 21H2. Um, there's no live migration uh, yet because it, we're using DDA, so it's hard to, um, the nature of assigning a full device, you know, changing, migrating that over to another device that has nothing to do with the GPU or has no notion of what happened to that um, device is, is hard to do and uh, complicated, if not impossible. So um, so this is what we are offering. And um, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more in a graphical way what um, this should look like. And I, and I, I display, if you can jump to the next slide, please. Um, so this is very, what, you can do this on, on PowerShell. And we also incorporated um, some WAC support, which uh, Prasid will, will show. But first thing you have to do is on each node, create a, a GPU uh, host resource pool. And the importance here is that, is that an abstraction, right? So you now you can assign more, more than one GPU, one or more GPUs into the host resource pool to be able to uh, be the VMs to talk to and be able to gather a, a, the configuration of a, of a GPU. Prior to this, you had to, um, set the PC, the, the PMP ID, I believe, and, or the, and be able to assign that to the VM is very complicated. So we, we added this layer to be able to make it easier for future investments um, and, and assignment, make it easier. Um, then the, the next thing, and you can see the PowerShell commands, and, and this is all in this link that's at the bottom, but um, you then uh, install the security mitigation driver if one is available. Um, then you disable or dismount that device from the host. You get the devices that are on the host and then be able to, um, with the PowerShell command, assign it to this host resource pool. So now the 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 GPU, the host resource pool knows that this GPU is on his um, realm and be able to um, get it from, be able to assign it to a VM when needed. Then um, because of uh, we're using where you, we have DDA, we you have to set the force shutdown because during when you move the VM, you want to be able to to force shut down the machine over to another host to be able to um, uh, detach that the, the data that was on the on the GPU because otherwise it won't come up on the other side. Um, then the next step is to configure or update the configuration of the VM, which will be assigning the VM to a host resource pool, and then. Um, that will allow you when the machine starts, which is the next step, it will query the GPU host resource pool. The host resource pool will say, hey, I, uh, here's a return GPU. I have one available. Here it is, and it assigns it to the VM. Then if you decide to move this machine, the cluster will uh, power down that machine, move it over to the next uh, host. And here comes the importance of the having the same resource pool name. It will go back to the, uh, the the second node and look for the same host resource pool uh, once the machine is started. And then if the machine has a, a, a GPU available in that pool, it will go ahead and assign it back to the to the VM. So basically this is the the, the in, in concept what we are offering in 21H2 uh, for specific uh, scenarios that you can use this for. 
Um, now that, that I showed you sort of the PowerShell way or the concept, conceptual way, I'm going to pass it on to, um, to proceed so he can walk you through the, the investments that we did in WAC to simplify this. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Alvin. Uh, hey, Payment, I just requested uh, approval to, uh, to get access to, to control the screen. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, hey, folks, uh, my name is Presidora. I am a program manager on the Windows Admin Center team. Um, I'm sure if you're on this call, you have used Windows Admin Center in the past to manage your Azure Stack API cluster. Um, so I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually manage your GPUs, your GPU pools, and of course, DDA assign your GPUs to virtual machines using Windows Admin Center. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, here I'll start off with just connecting to my Azure Stack HCI cluster. Um, it'll bring me to this dashboard that I'm sure all of us are very familiar with, where I can get information about my cluster. Things like, you know, virtual machine status, uh, memory consumption, performance graphs, and so on. Um, a lot of us are, are probably really familiar with this dashboard and, and uh, at, at this point probably skip through this. Uh, in this case, I'm actually connected to a two node Azure Stack HCI cluster. Uh, both of these nodes in the cluster are uh, running Lenovo's uh, LSC 350 machines, uh, both running the preview version of the Azure Stack HCI 21H2 build. Uh, in this particular case, uh, there are about 22 virtual machines that are running on this cluster. Uh, most of the virtual machines, as you'll see here, are just running on one node of the cluster. Um, and there's just one virtual machine running on the second node, this B1 node. Uh, and I'll actually highlight this one here since that's the workload we're interested in. That's the workload we're actually going to be running our GPUs with. Uh, on the left here, you'll actually see two new tools. Uh, you'll see one is a new security tool that folks are probably not familiar with, and one is a new GPU tool. Oh no. That wasn't supposed to happen. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, on the left here, you'll see two new tools. One is a new security tool and one is a new GPU tool. Uh, if folks are attending the next session here uh, on security, you'll, you'll find out more about the security tool. But of course, here for now, I'll focus on this new GPU tool. Um, the first page of the GPU tool, you'll actually see... Uh, oh. All right, pausing is not my friend today. I shall not pause. All right, um, so the first page of the GPU tool just gives you information about the GPUs that are present on each node of the cluster. Um, so in this case, each node has an NVIDIA Tesla T4 GPU uh, that can be used for DDA assignment. Uh, each node also has this generic Microsoft display adapter, which is why on the, on the right side, you'll actually see this column that tells you if a particular GPU can be used for DDA assignment or not. Um, and if a particular GPU is not assignable, it'll, it'll tell you why. Uh, and that page can also be used for things like enabling, disabling, and doing traditional GPU tasks for the host. As Alvin just explained, GPU DDA assignment for Azure Stack ATI follows this concept of GPU pools. Um, and so here, if I navigate to this GPU pools tab, uh, I'd be able to create this GPU pool on every single node of my cluster. Um, as Alvin mentioned, this uh, the importance of having a GPU pool of the same node on every node of your cluster actually is what ensures high availability. Um, so the Windows Admin Center UI actually encourages you to create this uh, GPU pool of the same name on every single node in the cluster. Uh, in this case, I just called my GPU pool test pool. Uh, and actually, just right here, I'm, I'm now ready to assign GPUs to actual virtual machines. Um, as I mentioned just now, I'm interested in this Peter test virtual machine, and that's what I'll be assigning my GPU pool to. Uh, so I'll click this assign virtual machine to GPU pool button, select my GPU, um, I'll have some advanced options like configuring my high or low memory space I.O. spaces. Uh, and of course, this last bit about setting the offline action. Uh, as Alvin mentioned, live migration is not supported for GPU DDA assignment. And so setting that option that I just selected there actually ensures that during a migration, the virtual machine actually turns off, then migrates, and then turns on onto the new node. Um, and so setting that last bit sets the offline action to be shut down where uh, it means on and offline, it should shut down and then turn on a new node. Anyway, here we'll see that Peter test has been assigned to this pool running on B1. Uh, so let's actually test the high availability here. Um, I'll select this B1 node and I'll, I'll pause it. Uh, 
of course, pausing a workload or suspending a, a node here actually migrates all of the workloads that are running on that particular node to the other node in the cluster. Uh, so in this case, if I navigate back here to the, G, uh, to the virtual machine page, uh, I'll refresh my list here, um, and we'll see that this workload Peter test has now been migrated to the other node in this cluster. Uh, there we go. Uh, so there's nothing running on LSE uh, 350B1 anymore, and they're all running on B2. If I navigate back to my GPU pool page uh, and I refresh the list here, we'll actually now see that uh, Peter test is now running and using the GPU pool on node two as opposed to the GPU pool on node one as it previously was. Of course, once I'm done here, I can just very simply unassign this VM from the GPU pool and, and uh, move around my business and, and once again assign this GPU pool to uh, another VM that I'm interested in. Um, so that's the UI for Windows Admin Center that's coming uh, to managing GPUs, GPU pools, and the whole assignment process for Azure Stack ATI. Uh, this is expected to be released here uh, next month uh, for folks to try out. Uh, and I'll actually pass it back over to Alvin to talk about uh, the, the future of GPUs with Azure Stack ATI. Sure. sure. Um, uh, go ahead, go ahead and advance the slides. Thank you. So I um, just wanted to reiterate the the next what we're looking into next for uh, for Azure Stack ATI is really the the GPU partitioning, and uh, we're looking into uh, targeting the the live migration capabilities. So this concept of you know trying to move this partition to another um, another node and be able to migrate the the the, the memory and the GPU uh, workload that it's using is what uh, the target it will be for the next um, version. We haven't landed yet. Um, uh, a, a specific version. That's why um, I didn't dis uh, disclose that. But um, but it's more more to come. So we're working on it, actively working on it. Um, I guess the call for action, which will be the next slide, is really to um, want to uh, start using the new GPU tool in Admin Center and uh, proceed. as that if you're? It's going to be released in October. Yeah, that's going to be released out here uh, next in October. Um, so just next month, you folks should be able to see the new GPU tool in the public Windows Admin Center feed for everyone to go install and try out. And of course, try out the new functionality for GPU DDA assignment on Azure Stack ATI. Awesome. Uh, probably ended a bit early, but we're here for Q&A. Yeah, guys, uh, thanks so much for the presentation. And I know a lot of people are keen to have GPU support in uh, Azure Stack HCI. So um, the DDA in the cluster is the first step. Uh, uh, you are working, as I got from the presentation, uh, at live migration for some future release. So was, was that meant with uh, DDA or also with GPU partitioning? It's meant to be with GPU partitioning. So you target directly GPU partitioning and live migration in one of the next versions, correct? Correct, that's correct. Okay, another question I have. I, we have some questions in the audience too. Another question uh, would be um, GPU partitioning, as far as I know in Azure, is only supported with one, one vendor. So is it safe to assume that you will maybe support the same vendor in uh, on premises because you have the code already for azure i heard there are some security problems with different gpu cards is that correct um we're working with different uh, we're working to actually include uh, a roadmap of our partners but we don't mm -hmm. have that information as of yet to to be able to disclose um so we we are trying to to work diligently with our with our partners and um, not only with our partners with our uh, GPU partners but also with our hardware partners to see what the integration they're in going to include. So it's a more extensive um, uh, yeah, offering because, than than just than just the, the the GPUs themselves. Yeah, yeah. Because if you now buy an Azure Stack HCI cluster and you get an update next year, for example, it would be cool if you already have the the right GPU. Uh, in them, yeah. So uh, because you don't change your cluster um, because of new hardware features, I, I assume. So that would be cool if you don't take too much time to give us a roadmap here. 
Correctly put, Manfred. Yeah. Is and to, to add something, <laughs> you mentioned uh, uh, call to action. Uh, everybody should test this. When I go to docs.microsoft.com, actually the information is that there's no list of supported GPOs. So it's a little bit hard to build a test environment. So uh, especially for me, it's clear for not in production, uh, I don't want to invest too much in this GPU cards, but for sure I want to test it. Are there any recommendations uh, for for example for 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 building labs what's the minimum uh, or, or what's a, a graphic card that's uh, actually supported that's, that's recommended for testing and nvidia t4 you saw it but is this <laughs> the only one this was one example yeah so nvidia has a, all their all the nvidia models have support for um DDA. i believe the new the new dda so that you should be able to use um any of the DDA supported GPUs and be able to install the driver um, on the on the guest and be able to um, have that be able to use or assign that. Okay, so if, so Ivan, if DDA works so far with Windows Server 2019 or Azure Stack HCI 20H2, um, we can assume the card will also work in a test environment with 21H2, right? Yes. Is, did, okay. Okay. okay that's helpful. Yeah. Okay, then uh, we come to some questions from the audience. Or Didier, do you have questions? You're uh, just, unmuted. Just a remark, because that would be a major improvement. That's something that worked in 2019, works with 2022. Because in the end, all the deployments we did with DDA with Windows Server 2016, come Windows 2019, the cards were no longer supported by NVIDIA. The lifetime of those cards was reasonably short, and that disappointed a lot of people, to be honest. So it's nice to hear that the longevity would be there a bit better than than before. Yeah, we off. I mean, we offloaded to the to the partners and to be able to provide that driver. So really, we are in that in that. You can look at it from that perspective that we're in. We're we will depend on the vendor to be able to provide you with the, the proper uh, driver to support it in the guest. So, it, so it basically it's a it's a third party vendor choice. You're not in the driver's seat there, right? Right. Too bad because. <laughs> OK, so I will ask the first question. Can we assign more GPUs to a single VM or is it one GPU? With DDA is just uh, the one. Um, you can have multiple GPUs in a, in a resource pool mm -hmm. to be able to have, you know, multiple. If something you have two VMs, you can assign one and one. Um, but it will be one one assignable DDA at this time. Yeah. OK, thanks. Next question is, is is it supported on a stretch cluster? So if you do a I assume if you do a live migration from one side to the other side and uh, there's the same GPUs there, every node has the same GPUs, would that work? Um, I don't see why not. I mean, the, the stretch cluster is just a storage. So once you move the, the machine and you configure the pool and the, and the host, of course, given that the, the host has the same pool, the same configuration of the GPU, um, it will request the the access to the um, to the resource pool and be able to assign it if available. Another one, um, any enhancements on DDA? I, I would add, I, I, I think, uh, uh, and, um, I, I missed the word, it's late. Uh, unless, uh, of course, the, uh, the, the pool support. Other enhancements there? Um, no, I don't think so. I think we just have the we wanted to sort of give the 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 first step into using DDA as a as a vehicle, um, give you that opportunity to use it in a cluster. Um, but we will have more to come probably in, in the in the GPU P space. OK. Um, does DDA failover affect the virtual machines VTPM RPC boot measurement? That's a complex one. <laughs> yeah, that that is is a that's a loaded one because um, that you are mixing uh, potentially 
some of the investments done on the security space. Um, so um, there, there are there are security. I mean, right now, if you don't have the, there's a dependency to do um, like HGS, and we don't have that um, capability in Azure Stack HCI. So there, there are different components here. Um, so the answer to your question is, if you have a VTPM today, the answer is no, you can't. Um, you cannot move it over. Yeah. So in, in the past, uh, Microsoft also was talking about GPU virtualization. Uh, now I got the impression it's uh, it's GPU partitioning. So is the virtualization, uh, virtualization of GPUs uh, off the table? Or is it still somewhere on the roadmap and maybe in the far future? Um, I'll say that the 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 focus right now is the the next the the next focus is GPU uh, partitioning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe down okay. down the down down the path we will, we will we will have um, ideas around the the virtualization, but for now it's, we're focused on GPU on um, partitioning. Mm -hmm. Another one um, is also addressed to you because you are also the Hyper-V guy. Uh, <laughs> do we need to disable the load balancing in the cluster since we cannot live migrate the VM? So it would be not fantastic if the VM is moved to another host and you sh we have to shut down it. And uh, so I, I would imagine what happens with the workload in it, right? Yeah, you have to be aware that you're gonna ha your workload is has to go down because of you're assigning a full device that it's that has ties into the 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 PCI channel of the of the host. So it's hard for you to migrate that same um, having that same ID specified on the other node, and um, that's where the complications of 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 DDA come in play because mm. it's hard to just match that um, configuration on the other host. Because their their dependencies on the OS layer. Sorry, have we lost the presentation and the picture? So the screen should the video should be there, yeah, but, but it's the not. Present, it's not. No, no. <laughs> but but you don't have the the attendee screen. Is anybody can anybody of the attendees give feedback if you maybe do the Q and A thing again? You have yeah, now we have to. Manfred, you are live, and the thank you isn't live. That's the main problem. Now, thank now, you is live. Now yeah, the blue yeah, screen yeah. is live again. Yeah, the blue screen yeah. is live again. We don't I, want I, to see blue screens, yeah. right? <laughs> I have more questions. Yeah. The audience has more questions. So don't mess with the screens here, Manfred. We have still one and one hour and 20 minutes to go. Okay. <laughs> So another question, and I didn't know that, so I don't know if it's correct. Uh, VM checkpoints were not compatible with DDA in 2016. Do this new version of the OS allow for VM checkpoints for DDA? Um, no, same rules apply. Um, so how do you back up uh, such a VM? Just don't put important stuff in it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was joking. So I did. I was not aware. I I, I forgot that uh, DDA and uh, checkpointing was not working. Of course, it's you. You put a hardware device in it. So okay. Yeah, that those are um, likely more investments that were that you're gonna see in, in the future. We just didn't uh, provide it on this on this release. Okay, that's cool. So then I then I had a a remark from. Um, I think a customer of the EAP program of Azure Stack HCI. Um, and uh, he said that uh, uh, DDA is important uh, even for Citrix environments. I don't find uh, it's uh, because it, it gives huge, huge improvements even for X, Excel and uh, browsers and so on. So uh, he, he's, he's very, he's liking what he's seeing in uh, Azure Stack HCI 21H2 with uh, DDA support. Just to want to uh, also give you feedback that's good one so he hopes that uh, uh, that now more customers can switch from vmware to uh, azure stack hci with with citrix uh, uh, servers rds uh, how it's called rd 
as servers, remote yes, desktop. remote desktop servers, yeah. station hosts, yes. <laughs> I, it seems to be that I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> okay, does Windows Server 2022 HCI cluster support GPU? Yes, they do, right? You talked about that, even with GPU partitioning. So uh, the, the questionnaire should specify the question more. Does yeah, I think that I think the what they're probably re referring to is um, yes, we do have a Windows server. DDA sorry, I, server. Yeah, but we don't have the su the support that you just saw for DDA is only for Azure Stack HCI 21H2. Yeah, but uh, DDA uh, without cluster, the cluster advantages are, is still supported in 2022, or is it removed? We never had support so for for. For um, we you can run a DDA um, GPU on a on a I'm host, sure. but you yeah. can't do the um the, the cluster. Yeah. yeah, of course. So it's still DDA is still there, but it's it's more a single server scenario, or at least not a uh, any enablement in the cluster. Okay, so this is a cluster uh, an Azure Stack HCI feature alone. Uh, sorry, we lost video again. <laughs> So what do you mean, Helmut? Do you mean the slides? Yeah, Actually, yeah nothing the slide is, is here. The slides is, uh, are gone and you are live now, but without a video stream. So maybe uh, are you uh, logged in as an attendee, Helmut, or are you logged in as a as speaker? As an attendee and a speaker. Both, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, we see this. I mean, I see the same thing. I see the little uh, the circles for everyone, but I don't see the, the, the live video. OK, because stuff. regarding the teams, it says the video is live. So the preview in teams says uh, the video yeah. is shared live. So yeah. now teams is the, so if we now have problems with teach capacity <laughs> yes. after 10, 10 hours, hours. And 23 minutes. <laughs> so Microsoft says it's 12 hours or up to 12 hours. <laughs> we are, but, uh, we are yeah. nearing the 12 hour yeah, mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we are at, uh, we are 10 hours and uh, 23 minutes live now. OK. Um, more questions from the audience or um, are there more questions from the audience or even from other speakers? Helmut, do you have any questions? No, thanks. So uh, Carl is saying that is, uh, it's I okay. I see live on video on the Teams. So okay. from one of the attendees, we have the feedback that the video is visible. Yeah, so okay. okay. Yeah, but only one, I don't see it either. Maybe can we have some Hyper-V related questions? On there I don't know if Al Alvin, uh, will you take Hyper-V related questions or uh, or not? Depends on what they are. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so yeah, they're, 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 they're more easy. like uh, ask they're for the be features, easy. Right? <laughs> It's more like ask for the features, right? But it would be pretty awesome to be able to, for example, schedule the, the, the VM version update. So for the next reboot, you know, Let's say I would like to update the VM version, but you have to turn off the VM, right? So you would be able to say, hey, I want to update this VM on the next reboot. So just make make cold boot for the VM and update the versioning. So you don't have to schedule it complicated way. So these kind of things like scheduling also the, the adjustments to the machines, right? The customer will ask you, hey, can I have in this machine instead of four vCPUs, I would like to have six vCPUs or 10 vCPUs. So you would just configure it and let it configure on the next reboot or something like that. It would be pretty awesome. I hear you. Yeah, um, I've, I've, hear, I've heard this, this feedback before. Um, I would appreciate um, Carson, do we have a mechanism to to get this feedback through? I did, we didn't, unfortunately, we didn't um, enable like a, a survey or something that we can add this to. I would love to to get a note of the, of this inf of this information and be able to. Yeah, if if you uh, if you set up a survey, I will get them to the attendees. If you okay. like this way, yeah. Well, we can use Slack channel, right? We can reach out to <laughs> thousands of people. So. Like, I, uh, what, I'm not in the Slack channel. I'm not active there. So, but ah, you can of course okay. use the Slack channel. Too much noise. Don't worry. I'm, yeah, I'm taking notes right now. But yeah, yeah. Great feedback. Yep. So, other other things we want to have in Hyper-V and Azure so, so Stack you, HDI. <laughs> sorry, let me just go back to that. So you mentioned two things there. You mentioned vCPU, um, 
mean scheduling any configuration that you have to VM that you have to do cold boot for, right? Or shut down the VM, right? So anything like uh, upgrading VM version okay. from nine to ten, for example, or you know adjusting the the CPU or making the, the the memory static to dynamic or dynamic to static, anything like that that requires turning off the VM, that would be awesome. Got it. Okay. Yeah, if if I can add to that, uh, for me, uh, it's more a Windows Admin Center thing. So, uh, Ivan, you are maybe not the right guy, but I can't live migrate in a cluster in Windows Admin Center in Azure Stack HCI uh, VMs. So I can't say, or at least I don't know how, I can't say move this VM to this host or this node. Um, for example, in a stretched Azure Stack HCI cluster scenario, I want to move the VMs to the other side and then switch the partnership because I have a planned downtime in one side of the cluster. That would be one example. Yeah. So if you if you pause a node, that is possible, of course, it moves the VM in the same side, but you can't get them over to the other. So I have to fall back to failover cluster manager or PowerShell to do that. And it would be nice to have that in the in the Hyper V module in in in, Azure, uh, in Windows Admin Center. So this is currently supported in Windows Admin Center. So I'm actually curious uh, if you're getting into a specific error or uh, if the UI is just not intuitive enough to kind of. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Prashid, I I didn't I didn't find it. So I'm looking for it for for ages now. To, so you you say move this VM that is running on maybe node one to node three. That is possible? Yes, that is absolutely possible. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I I have lost so that, power sitting, but I'm going to try and share my screen to see if we can maybe see this together. That would be perfect. So uh, I, I would love that because I'm missing this forever and uh, maybe I'm just blind or always look at the wrong place. May I already so, publish your screen? Is this fine for you? Uh, you so I, I'm actually sitting somewhere. I, I lost power and internet where I'm sitting, so I'm uh, using my phone to hotspot. Um, okay. Do any of you okay. have a WAC instance? We can just I can quickly walk you through it. Uh, so we can see your Windows Admin Center already. So I yeah. can. Uh, I can put this on the live stream. I, I have, of course, machines with Windows Admin Center that I can I can yeah. share my screen. Give, give me a minute. Please but if, if there are other Hyper-V related questions from the audience, that would be great. And we set this up. This is very important for me. <laughs> 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 so other questions. Can you can you look in the chat while I prepare? You are this? doing great with WAC related questions. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> We we have some in the chat. Um, does, that, so does any Hyper V question go? If you are if you are kind, Didier, yes. Okay, just take the the, the questions in the in the chat first, and then I'll. <laughs> you don't some. want to be kind or what? <laughs> I I'll, I'll be kind, but I'm also polite, so that the people who are still here get their questions answered, please. So, so we have one in the chat. Can I live migrate Windows Server 2022 VM to Windows Server 2019 host? And I think vice versa is the question here. There's a marketing and the technical answer to that. <laughs> and the licensing, maybe? I think it's if, it's if a, you a, create a, a, if you create a no version legal. 10 VM on 2022, you can live migrate it. If you create a version 11 VM, you can't. Yes. Yeah, and sorry, the, Ivan, to 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 take this to take this answer. That's fine. Yeah. So so I've got, I've got many the, jabs today. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, then we have one question: Is there any free Hyper-V version in Windows Server 2022? I believe that was removed. That um, <laughs> yeah, that was removed from the <laughs> from the SKU. The official answer is it's Azure Stack HCI. So use Azure Stack HCI for this scenarios to um, to to test your to run your test workloads. So the um, the free version of uh, Hyper-V server, there's no version Windows Server 2022. Um, Which is a bit of a pity, of course. 
Um, then we have a question. How can we migrate VM from Azure to Azure Stack HCI? Um, that will be a question for Kareem who um, in the window in the ACI team, but I believe there's um, you can do export import um, there. I think there's a mechanism to export it. Or you also can use the Azure um, um, ASR Azure re set recovery. I think that was that was uh, one of the items that um, um, mechanisms that were supported to to migrate. Um, but I'll definitely have to get back with with Kareem and and, and be able to get a, um, a better answer. OK, thank you. Uh, then we have a question. Do we need to disable the dynamic load balancing uh, in uh, Hyper-V cluster since we cannot live migrate the VM when we use the GPU um, DDA feature? Oh, we, we had that already. We had this already, sorry. Yeah. OK. It was still in the, it wasn't, so I can dismiss this one. OK, sorry, we had this. So um, now maybe I can see, I, I see the power. Something doesn't work with your sharing, Carson. Now I can see it. Yeah, now it's fine. Yeah, but it's not share, it's ah, shared sorry, it's anymore. Ah, sorry, not your one. It's uh, the screen from Parish. Can we, is this your yeah. Windows app center? Yeah, OK, so we will yeah. switch this to live, yeah. Feel free to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, Rashid, I know, I know the. Uh, I I think we have a misunderstanding, but uh, okay. please, uh, please show me. Um, so your question is live migrating a virtual machine within the cluster, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I have a, a running virtual machine here. I'm able to click move. Uh, I select the same cluster I'm currently on: SME LSC 350F, SME LSC 350F. This is currently running. I'll go back. This is currently running on B2, so I'll live migrate it to B1. Yeah. Uh, and if I click this little move button in a second, uh, so this confirms that you are indeed migrating within your cluster and you don't have to do anything. And then you hit move, and it will then migrate. Ah, okay. I I know where my misunderstanding is because it stated VM and storage, so I was thinking it's a shared nothing live migration but in in the cluster so, you you the, the vm the data stays at the same csv but you move the vm around right and so i am updating the text in our next release of WAC oh, to make okay. sure that it's clear <laughs> yeah i'm doing hyper v forever so vm and storage is for me a, sto a shared nothing live migration so I, this was my misunderstanding uh, manfred of course know that it was possible yes and, and, and I, I know what you mean because for me also VM and storage. You had the same misunderstanding that I. Uh, okay, it's a shared nothing live migration. Okay, yeah. okay, that okay. Um, now I'm no, I don't have to go to failover cluster to move VMs around anymore. Great, Feed great. For me. We will update the text for sure uh, in our next. Okay, week. thanks so much. OK, more questions. We have still seven, uh, six minutes to go if the audience uh, want that. So if there are more questions, I, I will have a look in the chat. Is there any plan to improve performance of the Windows Admin Center? <laughs> Always. Oh, just just Always. wait, just wait for our next release is all I'm going to say. Awesome. It Thank will you. be 10 times faster like GPU and CPU. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see some central database like uh, SCVMM like because there are many people that love SCVMM, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, to have, for example, SCVMM Lite, or you would have like a Windows Admin Center Enterprise with some agent based whatever that would, you know, ship information to the central database so you can query information about multiple clusters. That would be awesome. Yeah, you know, I'm actually really interested in such a feedback because uh, for a while now we are actually going towards the idea that WAC itself should be some sort of a, a stateless view where no matter what instance of WAC is running on a ton of different, like you and I could be running the same instance of WAC or different instances of WAC, but as long as we are both connected to the same cluster or the same node, the two of us will always see the same information. And a lot of the work that we build in Windows Admin Center, you know, relying on PowerShell, relying on uh, basically as little possible statefulness as possible really works towards that goal um, of being able to uh, have WAC basically essentially be stateless. 
So what I would love to see, and I'm not the only one, I have many customers, like to grab the SCVMM, grab the, 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 the main from it, right? Like, uh, you know, tear it to the bones and just grab the bones and build a new product on top of it. The, let's say Windows Service and Enterprise. I know it's stateless because, but you, what you have to do, you always have to query the PowerShell or WMI or uh, SDDC something, right? And this will give you a bad performance, especially if you are querying multiple clusters. That's something that SCVMM team already did like pff, 10 years ago. Uh, ah, yeah, but this is already invented wheel, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Maybe you can just you know ask around for the another PM who was working for a CVMM team back then, because they already had all of these discussions before. I think. Yeah, it's interesting feedback and, and uh, kind of is different from a philosophy that we've been working with. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll definitely have. Yeah, I, I know where it comes from, right? Because I I I, I know I, I've experienced the, the shift from the CVMM and. A, Many, I, I understood it, right? Because the SCVMM is a big product and it's not suitable for the smaller customers, right? But it has some really great ideas inside. And while this, uh, Windows Admin Center is a really great product for a customer who has one or two failover clusters, right? But there is nothing for, let's say, a customer who, had like, who has like 10 clusters, maybe. Yeah, in the future, probably uh, Arc. Yeah, me, there's today. Azure for that. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so Rashid, um, there is a question in the in the Q and A. Uh, I would like you to answer that because it's it's a bit more complex. Uh, it's about GP, GPU extension from Wok, uh, the Wok Insider feed. Uh, it's from Carl. So if you can look through the uh, uh, new uh, Q and A and maybe answer that, that would be great. Another I, another another sorry, one is I don't asking access to the Q and A. Yeah. I don't have access to the Q&A, I'm sorry. Uh, don't you have uh, it in your Teams client? I do not, uh, no. Oh, you have this, the phone situation, sorry. Ah, so okay, I, will, yeah. I will read it. Yeah. Um, I proceed. I have installed the GPU extension from the VAC Insider feed. I have disabled the hardware on the host and hoped to be able to configure the GPUs. Yet the GPUs in any state does not appear on the VAC tool panels of the machine. Could it happen that GPU extension only works, is designed for Aerostack HDI cluster and not for Windows Server 2019, 2022 clusters? That is accurate. The Windows Admin Center extension for GPUs is only available for Azure Stack HDI. Okay, we answered that. Uh, so then is another question, as uh, I think it's more for us, other than managing multi-hypervisors, what is the limitation of WOC uh, versus uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager? I think uh, Jaromir pointed out some things that we have a stateless uh, um, admin center is not saving the data. It's, it's always querying them. Other limitations, I think there are much advantages over a Virtual Machine Manager. You have much more possibilities with a Windows Admin Center than with Virtual Machine Manager, in my opinion. But people say I'm not a system center friend. It's maybe true. Um, so if there are other things you maybe Manfred, you can find. Also probably take that if that's okay. Um, yeah, take I, that, I, would say, yeah. I would say that Windows Admin Center and System Center are actually designed to work together. Uh, where Windows Admin Center is, you can think of it as these like reimagined re inbox platform tools. Um, you know, the replacement of MMC without you know the need for RDP or need for going to PowerShell yourself. Um, it's like, for example, included with your Windows Server license, there's no additional cost to it. And it gives you really that deep single server and single cluster drill down for troubleshooting, configuration, maintenance. Uh, it's really optimized for that like two to four node or two to four like cluster management, uh, deeply integrated with Hyper-V, Storage Spaces Direct, SDN and whatnot. Uh, while something like uh, SCVMM is really designed to be that that comprehensive suite of tools that is supposed to bring a, additional value across your environments and platforms. You know, it's to monitor and, and manage your heterogeneous systems at scale. Um, and yes, it does include, you know, Hyper-V, uh, but it also does things like VMware and Linux. Um, mm. And so I think the core difference is that there's no difference. It's that both of these are actually meant to be together, while one is supposed to be that very deep cluster management tool and the other one is this uh, sort of at scale management tool. 
Okay, proceed. Thank you for the answer.